Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. All right. Here we are. We're uh, live with Jordan Cunningham. Jordan, thanks again, by the way, for taking a few minutes to uh, to come on and do this with us. Um, you know, this, this tends to be our favorite subject to talk to you about. <laughs> yes. You seem to be so passionate about it. As somebody who works in government, how annoying is it when government is always getting in the way? <laughs> I've always wanted to ask somebody who works in government that question because obviously you're against you know all these different rules and things that they're trying to put in place. When government is supposed to be here to help people and to um, – to help uh, the community, and sometimes it feels like it, it can kind of get in the way. And please don't take offense to that, but what are your thoughts on it? Oh, I, I tend to agree with you. Uh, it's got an annoyance factor of about a 1,000 right now because <laughs> you know, here we are, we're fighting for months and months to get our kids back on the field, back in the pool, back doing competitions of various uh, natures, and, and we finally got some progress made there. We got, we got, we got sports reopened. And then we get this that drops from outer space from the California Department of Public Health that says oh, only one parent, only one household family member is allowed to go watch their kid play uh, soccer or baseball or dance or cheer or what have you. And it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, that's I think what what people rightfully get frustrated with, with government, uh, in particular, with some of the mandates that have come down from California Department of Public Health and from the administration is that they don't have any basis in science. They don't explain them. But, uh, you know, everybody, our kids are getting back in the classroom. The CDC just this morning said you don't need to space test six feet, three feet's OK, but you can't go watch your kid play soccer outdoors 10 feet from anybody else wearing masks with your family. It just uh, it's 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 lunacy. It doesn't uh, make any sense. My uh, my son is over the moon because what happened was when the pandemic hit, he was he's three. He was three when the pandemic hit. He's now four. And um, he was just getting into soccer, loving it, all that stuff, and then the rug pulled out from underneath him and nothing. And then for the last year, he's been asking, you know, how, how, do, I, how do I go back to playing soccer? And, you know, the age-old excuse that, or the year-old excuse, I guess, that parents have been giving their kids is coronavirus. And, by the way, I, there are parts of me that are going to miss that uh, when it is gone, uh, being able to lean on that as an excuse not to do things, to be honest with you. But, but um, it, now he's, he's excited about T-ball because in our community, uh, T-ball is, is going to start back up. And um, we've got a start date of, I, I believe, early April. And then um, we get this notification from the California Department of Health that says, yeah, you know, we can get back to sports and everything, but uh, either you or your wife has to take him there. And, we're, and and he wants to show us what he can do. He's been working on grounders in the backyard. You know, he's been doing everything he can get ready. He's excited for it to be a family thing. And I got to thinking about it, and the only family that could go watch anybody play baseball is Justin Turner's family or anybody else's for the Dodgers or the Giants. It's It's the craziest thing. That, that Well, you highlight a very significant and probably constitutionally significant distinction. We're about to allow professional sports to be watched by spectators with only capacity limitations for the stadium. So you can take your family down to your stadium, assuming LA County's in the red tier, which they're supposed to be soon. And as of April 1st, uh, you know you can pack 12 people. You know, we're sitting right next to each other. Uh, watch a professional game. Uh, but on, only you or your wife can go watch your son play T-ball. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense at all. And when things don't make sense in the constitutional law world, uh, we call that uh, violating equal protection. And I, I think if the CDPH and the governor don't immediately change this, uh, like immediately, I think that you're going to see lawsuits that are, are filed that will probably, in my view, be successful is, because it really isn't right. Have you heard word of how this stuff is going to be enforced if at all, I mean, is it going to be uh, up to the local enforcement of the areas involved, which is, you know, the entire state? I mean, like, I can't imagine because we fully plan, fully plan on going together as a family and my daughter as well to watch my son's first T-ball game. Um, I can't imagine somebody having the gumption to come up to my family and saying, I'm sorry, uh, you and your daughter are going to have to leave. How is it going to be enforced? Well, I, it's, that's that's part of the problem. The state has, uh, and California Department of Public Health has done this to us many times in the last 
11 months. They issue mandates. Uh, they call them guidances. It's unclear whether they're actually rules or laws or whether they're suggestions. That's the problem. Kick it down to our local county departments of public health to interpret them. Uh, they're ambiguous. Uh, they don't make a lot of sense internally. And then they kick it down to the school districts with respect to high school sports to interpret them. So San Diego Unified said you're allowed four family members. Lucia Mar, uh, locally here, has said you're allowed four family members. Other school districts are being more conservative and sticking to the one. But I, I don't know how they're going to enforce it. I mean, the state's not going to send CHP to monitor <laughs> your T-ball field. I, I assure you that. So, um, and But it puts our local administrators and our local public health professionals who are trying to do the right thing, comply with, with the state uh, mandates. It puts them in a terrible position where they can't win. I mean, who wants to be the person to to shut down the t-ball game, shut down high school soccer. I mean, I'm, I'm right there with you as a coach, as dad of four young athletes. You know, my daughter just made varsity soccer. Uh, I'm excited to go watch her. And uh, hey, man, if you're going to pull me and my wife off of the soccer field, <laughs> you better bring an army. Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> Jordan Cunningham is joining us, Assemblyman Jordan Cunningham. So what do we do now? I mean, how do we, how do we, I mean, obviously you're working on this. We're trying to bring awareness to this and how ridiculous it is that we can all go to a restaurant, sit at the same table together, but we can't go and sit in the same bleachers in the same row and watch our kids play sports. What's the next step? How do we, how do we move forward from here? Well, I think it's it's on the state level. Part of the reason I'm still up in Sacramento is to, to drive attention on this and try to get an answer from California Department Department of Public Health. Uh, I don't think they're going to have one because I don't think this was uh, reasoned through or scientifically based in the slightest. I mean, every everybody knows that, like you said, you can take your family to dinner together now indoors. If you're in red tier, thankfully, you can take your family to a movie now indoors. Uh, I did that last weekend. It was great. Uh, you know, but we can't outside to watch sports together. I mean, and the cheerleaders can't do their thing. That's that's unfair. And can't go play the football game. That's unfair. Uh, so I think locally, I'm encouraging our local officials, both school district and county public health, to you know be expansive and creative in the interpretation and be light on the enforcement. Uh, in Sacramento, I'm calling on Department of Public Health and the governor to change this immediately. Uh, I'm also uh, talking to attorneys that brought successful equal protection lawsuits earlier this year in San Diego County to see whether they have interest in uh, finding a set of plaintiffs down there. The rulings coming out of the courts in San Diego County on some of this uh, rather arbitrary mandate stuff uh, have been pretty favorable. So I think that uh, would be a good venue. So um, I think it's a legal strategy. It's a PR strategy. All your listeners that are outraged by this, as I am, uh, should write, uh, write their state senator, write their assembly member, write to me. Uh, and write the governor. And, you know, we need to we need to push back on it and explain uh, how unreasonable and how unfair it is. Our kids have been on the sidelines far too long. Our parents want to be on the sidelines watching and cheering them on. We, we need this for their mental health. Uh, it's the right thing to do. And I think, you know, it's got to be public pressure. And if that falls short, it's got to litigate. That's what has worked in the last 10 months uh, when these rather arbitrary things come down from the sky. Uh, those are the two things that have, have been able to to succeed. That's Jordan Cunningham uh, hanging out with us. We're talking about parents being allowed to attend their kids' sporting events. It was enough just to get the kids back playing, and now they're trying to come up with a law that says only, or a guidance, or a whatever the hell they yeah, want to call it. Just mass confusion. Of where <laughs> only one parent and no family members can actually go watch the kids play, and uh, Jordan is fighting that. We'll have more with him on that when we come back. Jordan Cunningham is joining us, uh, Assemblyman Jordan Cunningham. He's up in Sacramento right now trying to get some stuff done, working on this new um, guidance, as they're calling it. Hard, hard to get stuff done when you're going to deal with stuff like this. The Youth Sports <laughs> Spectators Guidance, which uh, outlined right now, says that only one parent, one family member, will be able to attend a youth sporting event. That means uh, you know that the mom and dad, the kids, nobody else can go. Um, we've been talking to Jordan about this, and it's kind of silly because you think about you could go to a restaurant or a movie or something like that, and you can be together, but you can't do it outside at a sporting event. It's just insane the amount of confusion that everybody, the entire country, has had to deal with over the past year. Yeah. And 
it gets compiled by more confusion because um, common sense isn't taken into consideration. Well, everything we're told, you know, even when we were in other tiers, is we could go eat outside at a restaurant, you know, and, and before we could eat inside, and we could eat together as a family, and we're outside. Well, what's the difference of sitting at a bleacher and watching a game, and we're not even facing each other. We're all facing the field or... Uh, you know, so I obviously I don't think people think about this. The other day, Jeff and I uh, were talking about um, there was a new act with uh, theme parks uh, like Six Flags. You, you, they're going to prevent you. From, they don't want you to scream on a roller coaster. You can't yell on a roller coaster anymore or any rides. And they're going to try to ban it. I know it's hard for the health department to have to, you know, I'm, I'm sure when you sign up for a job at the health department, you don't take into consideration that, OK, what do we do? during a pandemic so policies are probably this is not stuff that has been thought through so i you got to be somewhat sympathetic to that but also have it make sense across the board before you implement it that's what it frustrates us and and if you want buy-in from the public and you want them to make the sacrifices that are going to prevent uh, the the pandemic from from taking over in the way we're trying to prevent it you need clear rules that do make sense that are grounded in science and you need to communicate those rules clearly to people. And they fail to do that. I'm actually less sympathetic, probably because I've spent the better part of nine months <laughs> watching our state public health department. Our locals, by the way, are great. They've done a great job here in Slow County. Yeah. I my, my, my hat's off to them. And they've had a lot thrown at them, including state dictates that make no sense at all. Yeah. So I, I just watched the, the state bureaucrats promulgate so many unreasonable things and not be able to explain it. And then uh, sort of hide the ball when you ask them to explain it, that I've sort of lost confidence that any of it's based in science anymore. I mean, the CDC guidelines have been clear for almost the entirety of the pandemic. Masking is effective, sanitize, sanitizing is effective and distancing is effective. So let's let's stay on that message and let's do that and then let people live. And, you know, and, and the vaccine, we should it should it should be noted the vaccine's taking hold. I mean, the numbers are dropping. Uh, the most vulnerable folks in society that we don't want to get COVID because they are going to end up occupying a hospital bed and maybe have a bad outcome. Most of them have been vaccinated, uh, vaccinated already. And that's a good thing. So, you know, we're, we're at the tail end of this, thankfully, because of uh, vaccinations and the public being willing to sacrifice quite a bit. Uh, and, and to be Pushing out these rules that make no sense, that everybody knows makes no sense, is is totally counterproductive for the public health uh, goals we're trying to achieve. So, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I was sympathetic in the early months, but, uh, you know, I've seen them switch things around so much and, and do things that are so controlling and micromanaging of people's lives that they can't explain. The outdoor dining ban was challenged in court. Uh, they had numerous medical doctors and medical experts submit testimony in the form of declarations that uh, said that outdoor dining is not a COVID transmitting event, that the, the risk is negligible mm -hmm. for eating outside with your family outdoors, okay, or eating outdoors with your family. Um, this, the state, when it had to, it couldn't find an expert that would say that it was dangerous to eat outdoors and with respect to COVID. So they changed the guidance. So, <laughs> you know, that I, I you watch stuff like that and this will go the same way. Like, find me some medical doctor that's going to say me sitting. I'll even wear masks. I'll mask up my mm -hmm. whole family. I'm me sitting with my watching my daughter play, play soccer on a 120 yard field <laughs> up in stand with with her siblings, me and my wife, 10 feet, 20, heck, 20 feet away mm -hmm. from somebody else. And we're, that somehow we yeah. drove together to get there. Yeah. I mean, you know, as long as you space people out, they're, they're just not going to transmit a virus. Yeah, I, and it's great. And it's, by the way, we're testing a lot of these athletes, too. Yeah. The athletes have, in a lot of sports have been tested already before they can play. Mm -hmm. it, it, I, it's, it's crazy to me because it's like you're talking about youth sports, and I understand like things like football are pretty popular and they will fill the stands. But when you're talking about other other sports like my son's t-ball game realistically how many people are going to show up at my son's t-ball game? yeah besides parents realistically <laughs> i mean look it's parents grandparents and aunts and uncles right <laughs> i mean everything until you get to high school you know basketball football like the bigger you know then you've got a ca capacity issue you got to 
figure out how many people you can get in your stadium. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's all we're asking actually the state to do is just apply the same guidelines and rules that you apply to professional sports. Well, I got to tell you, Jordan, it's refreshing to be able to hear from somebody that will speak up against stuff that doesn't make sense that was elected. Because sometimes I feel like as the rest of us that sit here and we watch the news every day, we just don't quite understand and we don't hear anybody really stepping up and and questioning some of these things. And so we I know Jeff and I appreciate that. We, of course, appreciate your time as well. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, guys. I, thanks for covering it, and I do enjoy the show. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> well, we Stream us that. up in Sacramento. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> <We're doing it. laughs> right on, man. Take care, Jordan. Sure. All right. So there goes Jordan Cunningham. Um, it's Jeff and Jeremy. Uh, once again, if you uh, caught into this a little bit late, uh, this whole conversation is on our Facebook page. It's on our YouTube page. The KZOZ page is on Facebook and YouTube, as well as... Um, the Jeff and Jeremy page on Facebook. Just search Jeff and Jeremy. Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute-friendly podcast.